and welcome everybody to the 29th renewal of one of high school football's greatest rivalries. It's the 2009 Muck Bowl, the Lake Central Raiders taking on the Blue Devils of Pahokee. And joining me in the booth once again is Bill Bolander for a very, very special game in the high school football season. Well, you know, there's no question. I'm just, we're back from the witness protection program. <laughs> we get to do a game, and what a game to, to do if you're gonna do one. But uh, I rate this game dead even, Dan. I think the team that makes the fewest mistakes and doesn't get penalties is gonna win. Now, Pahokee has three losses this year. Two of those were forfeits. The one loss was to Dwyer, the common opponent that these two teams have had. Uh, Glade Central won that game, but he lost. Do we have an edge? I don't think so. I, I'll tell you what, Dwyer is, is in right in the category is not as good or better in these teams, but they were playing, Pokey's playing Dwyer when Dwyer was playing as well as any team. And at first game of the season, anything could happen, so there's no advantage. All right, it looks like we're ready to kick off. We are going to be meeting Daryl Nail a little bit later, but uh, we will do so after the ball is kicked off. Uh, right now, looks like uh, Fred Pickett will do the kickoff duties for the Blue Devils. And it's down to about the five yard line. Break to the left and some room around the left side before he's knocked out of bounds. That looked like uh, William Likely on the return. So first and 10 for Glade Central, who did win the toss. Yeah, the kickoff the there. Yeah, the kickoff there. Really, Pokey got bunched up in the middle, Dan, and, and nobody was outside to contain. And so Glade starts with great field position. Now, the Raiders are unbeaten this year. They have earned their living on offense with the pass. Over 2,000 yards throwing for the uh, quarterback, L.J. Thomas, who is uh, headed to Hampton University on a uh, scholarship after this season. Starting in the shotgun, yeah, not no, surprising. No backs. The Blue Devils looking very active. And we have a flag on the first offensive play. So far you've got uh, a great atmosphere here as usual. Probably 7,000, five to 7,000 fans here. They've been uh, tailgating all day. We got here at 10.30 this morning, Bill, and there were people already blasting their stereos and uh, just having a great time. It's, it's almost like a college atmosphere, this game. Oh, absolutely. This is the, the social event of, this, of the year. And both these towns take their football so seriously. So I just hope we have a good, clean game. The penalty was on the Raiders, making it a first and 15. Back to pass, flushed out of the pocket, running for his life, but dragged down. And the sack right there by Raheem Buxton. Uh, showing a lot of speed as he chased down Thomas. Well, right away I can see what Coach Thompson's going to do. He's going to he's going to speed rush his defensive secondary and his linebackers. I think you're going to see a lot of that kind of thing going on. If you watch the, the rundown here, Buxton just gets him from the backside. Defensive lineman wouldn't be able to do that. And and this is interesting. One of the themes we're going to be talking about is Glade's defensive line, which is uh, certainly one of the best in the area and has allowed very few passing yards. But uh, so far, Pahokee's defense starting out pretty hot as well. So now it's second down and about 20. Back to throw. Thomas flushed again, and this time, this time it's number nine, Nathaniel Harvey, who gets him going the other side. And just what I said, Dan, it's exactly what he did. He's bringing the, the short side, which is the, the hash mark to our side of the field. What he's doing is, if you'll see, number nine, again, a defensive back coming up and making the play because of speed. A very good mix-up by the Pahokee defensive coordinator. And, and mixed up is uh, probably a good description of what Thomas might be right now as uh, Glade's offense is doing nothing but backing up so far in this first series. That could all change in a hurry, of course. Uh, as I said, over 2,000 yards throwing this year with 25 touchdowns. So from the shotgun again, Thomas looking. This time he throws over the middle. He's got a man wide open. And it's uh, going to be bring it back almost to the original line of scrimmage. 
That was to uh, uh, Carlton Lewis, wide yeah. receiver. I'll tell you what, Pahokie is, is playing defensively. They're in a, what you call man free. Uh, the free safety is in the middle of the field. And those routes are going to be open, but let's face it, you know, with that kind of down to distance, I don't think they're all that unhappy. So on fourth and 11, the Raiders are going for it, at least. They look like they might be going for it. Early on, this is quite a gamble, but they are going for it. Back to throw and over the middle. He's got a man and he completes it. Wow. And that's a first down. Gregory Dent on the reception. That wow right there was a... Uh, I, I looked up and saw fourth down and 11. I went, where's the kicker at? And there wasn't any kicker. And they ran all verticals, which means they go straight down the field. And uh, Poke, he's in that man free. And I'm telling you, if he can get time to throw, Dan, he's going to complete passes. There's no doubt about it. I'm and, surprised. Uh, uh, Gregory Dent, of course, is uh, one of about 15 of these players who are expected to sign Division I scholarships this year. Dent is uh, headed to the University of Miami. So, interesting development on that first drive, backing up, but now in Pahokee territory, there's a flag on the play. Well, I think once again, the Pahokee receivers or one of their offensive linemen was not set when the man went in motion. That's automatic. That's a five-yard penalty. So I think Pahokee, Dan, is going to have to change up their secondary coverage. Uh, I like their pass rush plan. That's outstanding. But, you know, Glaze is going to adapt, and they're going to, they're going to block some people. It, it really makes a difference if they can just get a ball knocked down at the line of scrimmage or interception. Well, they got the pressure on the first two plays of the series. The offensive line doing a little bit better. There's a pass over the middle. And breaking free and going for the touchdown for Blake Central, Kelvin Benjamin. Same route, Dan. No backs. And they go in motion here. And the receiver just basically runs straight down the, the field. That's Kelvin Benjamin. And great looking ball from the quarterback. Uh, caught it in stride. They missed the tackle. That, the big thing with playing man is that if you don't make the tackle, there is no one to help you. And he got free over the middle. And I don't know if he's related to Travis Benjamin, but he certainly could be. Now for the extra point. The kick is up, going a little left, and it is no good. No good. So the Raiders missed that, but uh, after that start, I got a feeling there might be a lot more of this to come. Yeah, you and I talked before the game, and we said we wouldn't be surprised if it was a defensive uh, a game, but now that I see Glade Central line up, uh, I don't think they're thinking about defense. I think they're thinking about throwing the ball and getting touchdowns. And it's interesting, too, because this game has no playoff implications whatsoever uh, for either team, and so you could you could certainly argue that it, it does not hurt you to to uh, gamble a little bit in this game. Although I know as a coach, it's probably something you, you think a little bit uh, long and hard about before trying something like that early on. Well, as long as I've been here in Palm Beach County, the game this game I know one thing: about 75 percent of the people would rather win this game than win the state championship. Yeah. And it's that big a game. Yeah, and, and both teams have said so. Uh, we have not mentioned the head coaches. Of course, Jesse Hester, the head coach for Glade Central, former Florida State product, played uh, 11 years in the NFL, played with the Raiders, with the uh, Falcons, the Colts, and uh, the Rams. And on the other side, Blaze Thompson, who uh, took over this team three years ago and has three state titles in a row. So here is the kick. It is a short one. It's going to go to one of the up men. But even up men have speed. And there he goes. And he is, oh, he was one man away from going all the way. That was Merrill Noel. And uh, that's one of the up backs you don't want to hit because uh, Merrill Noel is a speedster. As a matter of fact, great quickness. Look at the sidelines. He gets the sideline again. The same kind of coverage downfield that Pahokee had on their kickoff. I, I might add that. I don't think uh, the Division I schools are looking at the kickers so far. Yeah, no, not so far. Uh, Noel, by the way, is one of three Blue Devils who've uh, committed to Wake Forest. 
so not not the up back you want to kick it to. All now right, so Pahokee now on offense for the first time. They'll start at about the 47-yard line. Back in the shotgun, looked like there was some movement, and uh, there was. And that one's uh, going to be on the Blue Devils. Yeah, it, procedure penalties early in a big game like this are very common. You get itchy, you want to get out, out of your stance, and you want to get ready to go. And that's why I always say that in big games, the team that executes offensively usually wins. And uh, an interesting question was, was answered. Uh, who was Pahokee going to start with at quarterback? Uh, normally, their, <coughs> their man behind there has been Emmanuel Perez. But this time they came out with the Joshua Johnson. Uh, both of those guys have almost equal stats. Perez has thrown for 900 yards. Uh, Johnson for 884 yards. So uh, we could expect to see both of them, I suppose, back there at quarterback. But uh, I would imagine that uh, Joshua Johnson, who's committed to FSU, gives you a little more of a speed factor there. So here we go. First and 15. And he is going to keep it and go up the middle. And to Joshua Johnson, cuts to his left. He could, he could go all the way on this, and he will. Touchdown, Pahokee, to Joshua Johnson. 53 yards. And wow, the, the 2009 Muck Bowl is starting out dynamite. We had so much for the defensive line, but you could see why Johnson was in the ball game. You could see why Johnson's in the ball game, Dan. Uh, this typical spread option that Florida runs, a lot of other teams run, and he gets the fake and then he takes off, and boy, he can run. I, if I'm Bobby Bowden, I don't want to. I don't want to show Bobby that play. He might. He might stick around two more years. I'm telling you, if you're out running anybody in this game, you are really fast. Yeah, because there is some just incredible speed out there in the field. Point after attempt. That doesn't look good, but it, oh, it is. It just made it. Just made it. So uh, the after by, uh, I guess it was made in Perez there, but I could be wrong. Go into the first quarter. No, that was uh, Miguel Rodriguez. And I think we got a replay of that touchdown coming up here, Coach. You're going to see that fake handoff here, and it's a little seam. Good block on the outside. But this is the cut that, that got him the touchdown, this cut here to back to his left. Now I want to point out there was a great block thrown Upfield, yeah. by the wide receiver out here. He occupied his man for about 30 yards, and this allowed – the quarterback to get in the end zone. Great speed. And yeah, he turned it on right there, and nobody was going to catch him. So not seven a, to six now. Pahokee leads it. He's got 7:55 left to go in the first quarter. 